Greetings and salutations, vault dwellers and wastelanders. My name is Oscapt. And I'm Noodlepants. And we're here today to talk to you about Season 17. Season 17 hit the world yesterday, and there's been a lot of drama about it already. Personally, I think it's too early to say whether it's good or bad. What do you think, Noodle? People are definitely showing mixed emotions about it. Drama is the right word to describe it. It's noisy, it's messy, it's buggy, but it also brought about a lot of really interesting and exciting changes. So it's a little bit of both. Some people are excited, some people are disappointed, but absolutely everyone is playing. And people are showing mixed emotions over rewards, their quality, their cost, and their difficulty. To help clear things up, we are here to bring you science. And math. That'll help you understand the real cost and value of the rewards in Season 17, and help you make a decision about whether playing it is worth your time. Let's dive in. First, for everything in this math that you're about to see, we are skipping bonus page two. We will talk about bonus page two separately at the end of the video, so you do want to make sure to stick around for that. We're also assuming that you are a normal player, not someone who is going to grind West Egg for 40 hours straight while hyped up on Red Bull or math uh, just to get the repeatables. Some people still have jobs. Straight away, there are 15 pages in the Season 17 rewards compared to 14 pages in Season 16. The average distance in rank required between pages is 7 in Season 17 compared to 8 in Season 16. You're going to unlock reward pages faster, giving you more options for your tickets. However, there are fewer items on many of the pages, and there are fewer items overall. In total, there are 128 items in Season 17 compared to 140 items in Season 16. Same number of items for Fallout first in both seasons, though. Fewer for standard players. This drives the average cost per item for standard players up from 31 tickets in Season 16 to 36 in Season 17. Now, for Fallout first players, it's actually slightly lower in Season 17, falling from 17 to 16 tickets per item on average for the items that are reserved for Fallout first members. The total average price per item for all items is 29 tickets in Season 17 versus 27 tickets in Season 16. Things are more expensive, and there are fewer of them. The minimum rank required to purchase all items available through Rank 100 is actually Rank 119 for Standard Players and Rank 148 for Fallout First. This is the same as standard for Season 16, and it's one rank lower for Fallout First. The minimum rank required to purchase all items through rank 150 is 156 for standard in Season 17 versus 149 in Season 16. And for Fallout First, it's 185 in Season 17 versus 179 in Season 16. This is one of the items that frustrated me in Season 16 and continues to frustrate me. The fact that with the original scoreboard, we got 100 items when you got 100 ranks. And if you were Fallout First, you got to a rank and you got two items because you were Fallout First. You were rewarded for being a paying subscriber to Fallout First. And with the new seasons, you have to work harder and grind for longer. It's like Bethesda took your money and uh, didn't even give you a kiss. I, I feel that way too. The time that it takes to get to rank 100, if you're only using the boosters on the scoreboard, the 25% boost that you get in 5, 10, and 10 increments, is 6.29 weeks and 11.29 weeks to get to rank 150. So from the previous data points, this means that to get all of the rewards for a particular rank, players need to play for 9.5 weeks to reach all the rewards for rank 100 if you're a standard player. 12 weeks to get all of those rewards, including Fallout First, 11.9 weeks to get to rank 150 if you're a standard player, and 14.8 weeks to get all of the rewards through rank 150 if you're Fallout First. 
if they give you those weeks. As we saw in season 16, they didn't. Season 16 lasted for 10 weeks. It's not possible to complete a season without score boosters, which makes them a mandatory item. There was no change in the price of a ticket in atoms or dollars, but the price of a ticket in caps changed somewhat dramatically from 611 caps per ticket to 500 caps per ticket. The reason that this happened is because fewer caps are rewarded in season 17. There are 10,000 caps in season 17 versus 15,000 in season 16, but the cost of those caps was lower. It was five tickets in season 17 to get those 10,000 caps versus 30 tickets in season 16 to get the 15,000 caps. This is effectively quantitative easing, where the perceived value of items is now lower because Bethesda printed more caps. <laughs> they just printed more caps. <laughs> Definitely fewer caps are rewarded. Also, we're getting fewer score boosters, three instead of six, fewer scout banners, five instead of 10, no repair kits this time. Last time we got 15. Legendary modules, we're getting 10 instead of 20. Legendary script, 600 instead of 1500. And no perk cards at all, no perk card packs this time. Last time we got five. However, for what it's worth, we are getting the same amount of lunchboxes, gold bullion, and atoms. Yay! Except for that one atom reward at the end on bonus page two, and we'll talk about that in a second. Oh, that thing is so insulting. Sorry, sorry, scientists, scientists. We are, we have no opinions. No opinions, we are just scientists, that's right. Noodle bought season 16 when it first came out so that she could do a review of the items that were in it, but this time she decided not to buy it. Why is that, Noodle? Well, mostly because I feel that the items that are offered to us this season are kind of junk and there aren't enough of them. Mostly. Mostly. <laughs> And it's not just about preferences. First of all, I wasn't excited about the Pioneer Scouts theme, but I would have put that aside and I would have bought the entire season just so that I can make the review videos of the main weapon, of the new building sets, but we didn't get any of that stuff. We got a bunch of paint jobs for power armor and a lot of decorative items and posters. And that's it. There was nothing worth paying for. I'm not going to use it. I have nothing to review, so I didn't pay. I also noticed that many of the items in the season, especially when you get further along in the rewards pages, are duplicates of items that you got previously. Oh my god, yes! There are two almost identical hockey masks, they just have slightly different paint. There are multiple versions of the camp signs, which technically they're different, but do you really need 15 different camp signs? I mean, that's, they're tiny and Bethesda just changed the icon on them. There are two archways, one with vines and one without. And the inner tube chairs, the difference between the plain one and the Slocum's Joe one is, you know, okay, so one looks like a donut, but is it really a better reward such that you have it later on? And I could even point out the similarity, in fact, the straight up identicality, if that can be a word, between the vintage camper and the Fallout First survival tent. They're the same thing except one has a loadout changer and is a survival tent and is available for Fallout First, which is cool, but it's it feels like it's the same item. Like, okay, so you can take this tent that you can put in your camp or your shelter and you can take it with you. I would have liked to have seen something original instead of just copy paste, throw a little bit of paint on it and a loadout changer. Agreed, agreed. Just a, a new skin, a new paint job on the same item is kind of cheap. It's lazy. It's lazy. Yes. Bonus page two is special. It requires you to have purchased 81 items, but if you're a standard player, there are only 83 items available to you through bonus page one. This means that even though Bethesda is telling you that you have a choice about what to buy, you're effectively being forced to buy everything. And when you get to rank 150, you will have at most 340 tickets saved. And this is only if you didn't buy the two most expensive items from bonus page one. It's more likely that you'll have fewer than 75 tickets saved. So when you get there, you won't even be able to buy anything from bonus page two once it unlocks. If you're a Fallout first player, it's a little bit better since you have 128 items available, but it's worse because you'll have spent more tickets along the way. Bonus page two has another interesting quirk. 
it has 100 atoms for sale for 250 tickets. Now, by the time you get there, 250 tickets is going to cost you 10 ranks. At that time, you can, at most, get 10 ranks per week. Atoms have a nominal cost of 1 cent, but if you buy the season and get back the 2,000 atoms inside of it, you can get that down to 7.7 tenths of a cent. This maps to 4 cents per ticket. So at this nominal cost, by paying 250 tickets for 100 atoms, you're now paying $10.42 for 100 atoms that you could have just bought from the store for a dollar. It gets even sillier than that. Not only is it $10 to purchase $1 worth of atoms, but at the in-season exchange rate of atoms to tickets, it's also 1,382 atoms to purchase 100 atoms. This sort of thing makes me think that Bethesda honestly believes that the people who play this game are stupid. There's no reward for the effort. There's no reason to feel good about being overcharged for rewards that you worked really hard to achieve. It's rude and inconsiderate, and people are absolutely right to be pissed off. It's difficult to quantify the value of these rewards when all you're given is a virtual currency in exchange for your time. But you do have a sense of value for things in the atomic shop. So here are the true costs for every item in caps, atoms, and dollars. This can help you decide what to buy first or if you want to buy any of this stuff at all. Why don't you recite a poem, Wild Theory? Because I'm not a freaking Vogon. <laughs> Slithery and blithery, I bluegle morphed my blah -a blah Okay, okay, that's enough poetry. Bottom line is, we're not here to tell you if this season is good or bad, or if you should spend time on it or pay for it at all. We want you to do whatever makes you happy. There's no need to get emotional about this. It's a video game. Life's too short to spend energy on stuff like this that ultimately just doesn't matter. But math doesn't lie. And we hope that we've given you enough information to make an informed decision about whether or not you want to be Bethesda Scorched. Don't be Bethesda Scorched. Nobody wants to be Bethesda Scorched. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy all the hard work that we put into our math and science videos, please make sure to give this video the thumbs up, subscribe to this channel if you don't already, and if you really appreciate all the hard work that we do, please become a channel member or hop over to Patreon and help support the channel that way. I'm Noodlepants. And I'm Oscapped. And until next time, stay safe out there, vault dwellers. In the heart of West Virginia, where the shadows creep and sway, lies a land of rusted dreams, where the brave dare not stray. Appalachia, oh, it's a treacherous ride, with dangers untold and nowhere.